Rogue Galaxy was developed by Level 5 and was published by Sony. The game did pretty well in Japan. However, here in the US, the game didn't get a lot of attention despite how well the game was received by critics. But what do I think of the game? Is it good, bad, or just meh? The story of the game is rather simple, or at least the overall plot is. It starts off with a young man named Jaster who gets confused for the legendary hunter Desert Claw. Because of this, he gets hired onto the Dorgangoa Pirates crew, who are traveling across the galaxy in search of the greatest treasure in the universe. To be honest, I rather like the simple plot and the treasure hunting idea. However, the game does have some typical save the world kind of story towards the end, which is okay, but if they would have just kept it to just a treasure hunting story, it would have made the game feel more unique in terms of its story. The characters you meet throughout the game will have some expressive and memorable personalities. Party members also have distinct personalities and their own backstories, with my favorites being Simon's, Steve's, Zegrom's, and Lilica's since I found theirs to be the most developed. So, with a fun and simple plot mixed with fun and entertaining characters, the game's story becomes quite an enjoyable experience. The game is an action RPG. You can control one character at a time, but you can switch between any of the three characters you have active at a time in your party. Most of the time, however, you will be playing as Jaster. With the use of the Dorgangoa ship, you will be able to travel to different planets and explore them. Now, to be fair, most of the game consists of pathways rather than wide open areas. However, to make up for this, most areas consist of multiple dead ends and confusing pathways, such as Starship Factory and the Gladius Towers, being some of the most confusing areas. While areas like the Labyrinth and the Leo King Ruins have some more simple layouts. When you are walking Walking around on a planet, you will automatically fill up the map, which is quite helpful, along with the fact that the map has a star marked on it of where you need to go next in order to progress the story. You will also come across stores and vendors who will sell you items and weapons. Save points are scattered throughout the worlds, and at them, your party will be fully healed. You can also store items here. You can also teleport between save points, which is quite helpful when in dungeons, since if you run out of items, you can easily use the save point to teleport to an item shop, stock up on items, and teleport back to where you were in the dungeon. By finding all the save points on a planet, your map will completely fill itself up and will even show you where unopened chests are located. There are certain areas in the game where you'll have to use certain items to get past some obstacles. However, this doesn't happen very often like the use of the freeze gun and the monograph gun, which I wish were used more. When walking around, random encounters will occur. The battles in the game are quite simple. Each character has two weapons, a main weapon and a sub weapon, with each button assigned to the X and the square buttons. During battles, your party members will give you suggestions of what kind of ability or item they may want to use when they are fighting. And to be honest, the party AI isn't always the smartest, as some of the suggestions they give you aren't always that great, or they have a difficult time fighting enemies that are rather easy. You can access a battle menu to automatically make characters use items or abilities. All actions your characters do in the battle will take up energy from their energy bar, and once the energy bar is empty, they can't attack or use items and abilities. The energy bar will refill slowly on its own, but if you guard against an enemy attack, your bar will fill back up immediately, keeping the combat in the game fast-paced and intense. Some enemies will drop blue orbs that are used to fill up your character's burst bar. Once you have this bar full enough, you can perform a burning strike, which is a strong attack against one monster. Monsters come in different varieties, like some that can fly, some that can only be hurt by attacking their head, and some you have to jump on before being able to attack. You can also do a charge attack to break barriers of certain monsters, which can get kind of annoying, but what's even even more annoying is that some monsters will require you to use Jaster's barrier gun to break their shield, which is annoying when there are more than one of these monsters around. Sometimes you can also do challenge battles, which give you an objective to complete in order to earn a hunter coin after the battle, but we'll talk more about those later. In order to gain abilities or burning strikes, you will have to fill up your character's revelation chart. To fill up your revelation chart, you must have correct items for open slots, which is an interesting way to have your characters grow and each character has their own distinct skills that make them unique in battle, which is something I really like. You can find plenty of the items in chests and from stores, but later slots will require more rare items that are dropped from certain monsters. Winning battles, your characters will gain experience points for leveling up, but your weapons will also gain points. Once weapons have enough points, they can be mixed with other weapons of the same type that also have enough points to create all new weapons. This is done by feeding Toadie. The game is also 
also full of a lot of side quests, like how you can kill a certain amount of a monster and earn points that will increase your hunter ranking in the galaxy. You can also earn hunter coins, like I said before, from winning battle challenges, or from killing mimic monsters, which are some of the most annoying monsters in the game along with being some of the hardest. Earning hunter coins will increase your store card that will allow you to buy better weapons and rare items. There's also a factory system where you must get blueprints from NPCs around the galaxy that you can then use to create new items and weapons at the factory. The factory can be rather intimidating by having to set up machines correctly, but it's not that hard, it just requires a lot of time and patience. One of my favorite side quests are the quarries, which are special monsters you will have to hunt by finding where they will appear and presenting the right item to make them appear before you get to fight them. Another side quest I really like is the Insectatron, which is an entire game in of itself, requiring you to catch insectars with traps and bait, then feed them and raise them so that they can be used in a tactical RPG tournaments, with different insectars having different skills for battle and they can even be bred to make better insectars. There's even an extra planet you can visit as a side quest in of itself. You can even find different costumes for your characters, which I I find to be a small but nice touch, as there are some really cool costumes like the Midnight Cloak, Phantom Robe, Star Traveler's outfits, and all of Steve's costumes. Plus, once you have beaten the final boss, you'll have access to an all new area called the Ghost Ship, which has challenging boss fights and even a 100 floor dungeon challenge. Visually, the game looks amazing. Once again, Level 5 uses cell shading to create a great visual style. Character models are very well detailed and have some great animation. Locations are also extremely detailed, with some areas being very atmospheric and colorful. However, some dungeons do have some very repetitive areas with the labyrinth and the ghost ship being very guilty of this. But like I said, there are some planets that are fun to explore. The music in the game is also very good with there being some very memorable tracks. The voice acting is also quite good with some notable voice actors such as Steve Bloom. Overall, the game story had potential to be more unique, but mostly because of the characters, it's still quite enjoyable. The combat is also fast and fun. But the game is also quite challenging and there are some boss fights that can be rage inducing like the Mud Whopper. However, the difficulty does make it feel more rewarding when you overcome the difficult parts. Plus, there are plenty of side quests in the game that have you playing it for hours, and some you may find yourself very invested in like the Insectatron. Rogue Galaxy is a good game. I absolutely love this game. It is by far my current favorite action RPG for the PS2. It's a very underrated game that definitely had a lot of time and care put into it. I would really like to see Level 5 make some kind of spiritual sequel to this game. If you are a fan of RPGs, I highly suggest you give this game a try. It is hard, but it's a very fun and entertaining game. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video and I also hope you found it to be reasonably informative. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please check out my channel and subscribe if you'd like. If there's a certain PS2 game you'd like to see me cover sometime in the future, then please leave a suggestion down below. I'm MCB, the PS2 Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.